That's our good friend Kevin O'Connell from earlier this week discussing the long-term contract signed by Justin Jefferson and emphasizing that they never considered, discussed, et cetera, a possible trade of Justin Jefferson. Well, look, we know that teams will engage in whatever semantics they have to engage in, and I'm not calling Kevin O'Connell a liar. I think he's a very honorable man. He's a great coach. But based upon everything that we've heard, and we'll get to some of the details, but just the mere fact that the Vikings showed no urgency to try to sign Justin Jefferson until after the draft, I think that they were sitting back and waiting to see what happened. And if a Herschel Walker package comes along, so be it. But I was told firmly over the weekend there was no urgency to try to get him signed before the draft. After the draft, that's when all of a sudden the Vikings are ready to try to get this done. Right. Common sense tells us that even if they weren't activating the let's try to trade Justin Jefferson plan, let's actively shop Justin Jefferson, they're sitting and waiting to see if someone comes along with something that they can't and won't say no to. That's just common sense. And I'm not saying that's a bad idea. Let's make sure that we're going to go all in with $35 million a year or whatever it's going to take in new money to keep this guy around before we make the final decision. That's how you run a team. You don't get attached. You make your decisions based upon what it's going to cost and what we're going to get out of it. And if someone's going to come along, with an offer of draft picks that we absolutely positively can't confuse, because I think their number one priority, I said this a year ago, they've had great receivers over the last 50 years. It hasn't gotten them to a Super Bowl. They haven't had a franchise quarterback over the last 50 years. Their number one objective this offseason was to get a guy that they think can become a franchise quarterback. And if you can keep Justin Jefferson, great. But their goal was to get that franchise quarterback. And I think that, that... they, they just decided we're going to be passive and we're going to see what happens. And we can honestly say we never considered trading him. But why did you wait until after the draft to sign him? I think common sense says they were curious to see what might happen. Yeah, I, 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 that, that's kind of my thought and feel in this situation is, yeah, they weren't, they weren't calling teams and going, hey, Justin Jefferson's available. Hey, Justin Jefferson's available. Hey, call us back you know, within the next week and, and, you know, send us an offer of a package of guys you want, right? No, that wasn't going on, right? But I know 100% they were getting calls consistently through the offseason about, hey, you didn't get a deal going with Justin Jefferson. What's the deal, right? Is he available, right? Here's this. We're, we're willing to start here and go from there. I mean, they, they took calls on that. So they knew there was teams interested. Hey, right. Excellent point. Let, let me say it before I forget it. Yeah. You never get to the point where you know that that five or more teams were willing to give up multiple first-round picks for Jefferson if they're not engaging in the conversation. What happens if the Chiefs get a phone call on Patrick Mahomes? It never gets to the point where anyone knows how much they would give because they hang that phone up. They don't have that conversation. It, It never matures to the point where anyone has any idea what anyone would give if they refuse to listen. So even if they're not shopping him, they definitely listened when they got those calls. They didn't hang up the phone. They didn't laugh it off. They didn't say, oh, are you crazy? Are you high? No, this guy's untouchable. He's untradeable. We do a draft from time to time, Chris, of who the untradeable, untouchable yeah. players are in the NFL. They didn't hang up the phone. They didn't slam it down. They didn't pull the cord out of the wall. They talked to these teams when they called them. Yeah, they, they, they did. You know, they did. Now, again, it, it wasn't shopping. And, I, you know, to your point, I think they were, you know, maybe waiting. For if, hey, whoa, if something blows us out of the water and we can't say no, we'll get it done. But by all due accounts and everything we know about the situation, certainly, right, from, from everything I know, hey, yeah, they, they made some calls up about number five, right? And, you know, you and I have been led to believe that Malik Neighbors was – the guy that was their target there, right? And then within that, yeah, I'm not mad at them for for maybe looking at a way to go, wait, this guy's really good. We think he could be the next Justin Jefferson and we don't have to pay him. Yeah, I mean, I get that, you know, but but yeah, to your point, it, it's not the untouchable guy, 
Uh, it, it, it's, and, and it's not like they were shopping them either, but yeah, Kevin O'Connell can, can say that and, and sleep well at night to know like, Hey, I didn't lie. We weren't looking to trade them. We weren't calling teams, but you know, as we know, and as uh, I definitely know teams were calling about, about Justin Jefferson. I was going to say something else. So and I forgot. I'm getting old. To remember. Yeah. So there's two important. Yes, you are. There's two important, to, important points to remember. Number one, as we said, if he's completely and totally untouchable, if there's no way, no how he's ever going to be traded, they hang up the phone on anyone who calls. They never engage in the conversations, and they engage in the conversations. Secondly, the neighbors thing. Folks, as we've said time and again, but I'm going to keep saying it until people start listening to us. Too many people heard it for there to be nothing to it. Chris and I heard it independently. We weren't even in communication on draft night about it. You were doing your videos. I'm doing mine. We both hear it independently. Others heard it. They move up to get Malik Neighbors. That doesn't mean they were going to trade Justin Jefferson. I didn't hear that they were going to trade him if they had gotten Malik Neighbors. All I heard is they were trying to get up to number five to get Malik Neighbors. And people in the Chargers draft room wanted to do it. And Jim Harbaugh said, no, I want Joe Alt. We're not going to do it. And so what would that have meant? Do they keep Justin Jefferson for this year and, and maybe franchise tag him the next year? They could have done it. They could have gone embarrassment of riches at receiver. If they wanted to, because Malik Neighbors is making $29 million over four years combined. As the sixth pick, it wouldn't have been much more than that as the fifth pick. And they got Jordan Anderson under a rookie deal. They could have done it if they wanted to. Or they just sit back and wait for somebody to make them an offer for Justin Jefferson. See, that's the point. They're able to say, plausibly, we never considered trading him. But the circumstantial evidence, which is every bit as potent as direct evidence, just because you didn't see it happen, doesn't mean you don't apply common sense to what transpire you, you wake up in the morning you know you went to bed it wasn't snowing you wake up in the morning there's three inches of snow on your car you didn't see it happen you know that it snowed and the thing that irks me about it and it's a combination of access driven journalism and naivete kind of like that fan concept that trickles into the brains of some of the people that cover the team they just swallow the bullshit from the team and i'm not saying it's bull but they know that it's in their best interest to push the idea that there's no way, no how the Vikings were ever going to trade him. That what Kevin O'Connell is saying means it was never going to happen. And anybody who says otherwise is just making stuff up. And that is just incorrect. And if they're going to be aggressive about it and call out those of us who were hearing otherwise, then I'll be aggressive about it and say, don't hate us just because we were doing your job while you were asleep at the switch on the beat that you cover or that you consciously decided to look the other way because you knew it was good for your career to to look the other way and not pick at that possibility that they were talking about trading up to get Malik Neighbors or that they were sitting back waiting and listening for an offer that might blow them away on Justin Jefferson. So don't throw darts at us and we won't throw darts at you, but let's be realistic about this. And that's what we're here to do. We're not just going to spoon feed you what people say. We're going to take you layers deeper and let you know what, really goes on and what really happens and how these things work. And, you know, it's funny. People, you know, people just want to float around until something surprising happens. They say, wow, look at that. How did we didn't see that coming? We're here to try to help you understand that there's plenty of stuff you should see coming. And just because it doesn't happen doesn't mean it was never going to happen. Yeah, I uh, agreed. You're, you're, you're right. And again, hey, what, 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 what do we expect? Kevin O'Connell doesn't want to you know, he doesn't even want to dive yeah, into that subject. Yeah, we were going to trade him. Yeah, yeah we thought right, about it. Right. Yeah, the we talked about it. The guy that's the leader it. of our team and all that. Right. I mean, it's 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 a no-win situation there. He wants to squash this, right? And then, yeah, to plays into it is what you're talking about. Yeah, the beat writers are part of it a little bit. They don't want to be disgruntled. They've had enough times where they've probably asked questions. And, hey, we know coaches, you know, that they've gotten good at, deflecting or hey I, there was no conversations uh, you know he's here and we're, I mean that's we know they've gotten good at that to the point of you know it's like the Bill Belichick school of, of coaching there in the press conference where I feel like beat writers are kind of like exhausted by asking follow-up questions now because the the coaches are pretty good at kind of ending it right there and oh. making their point but yeah you're not going to get the total truth of that situation out of Minnesota regardless it, it's just not going to happen and look, if the teams are smart, I'm not saying this is right, but think about it. You've got a bunch of different reporters from competing publications that are all trying to get most favored nation status. There is a certain amount of ass kissing that is going to happen. There are limits to how far you're going to push it. Otherwise, you're not getting the sit down with 
the coach. You're not getting access to this player. You've just got to work harder. You know, they're going to give you resistance. They're going to make it more difficult. Well, you need to be here 10 minutes early. Or, oh, sorry, we're out of time. I mean, there's all sorts of little ways that they can treat someone who plays ball well and treat someone who doesn't play ball not as well. And that just goes into the overall stew. How much of a pain in the ass do you want your life to be? And that's what causes the combination of, I don't want to look like I was lazy or I had my head up my ass on one hand. And on the other hand, I don't want to say or do anything that's going to get the Vikings PR staff to call me up and yell at me for saying something that doesn't reflect the party line. These are real dynamics. Even though these people aren't employed directly by the team, you're kind of captive when you're working that beat. There's just a certain etiquette to it. There's a game you have to play. And they're playing it now by acting like it was never a consideration. There was never anything to it. The beat writers and the people who cover the team are playing the game of nothing to see here. When the reality is there was something to see and they had to make the decision that they were going to pay him. And before they made that decision, they sat back and waited to see what might happen. And then too many people have heard that they mobilized to try to move up to get Malik neighbors to ignore that as a very real possibility. Yeah, I, I mean, again, I, I, you know, you said it right. Logically, I mean, you know, again, first off, it, you're running an organization. It, it's not crazy thoughts for them to have or, or think about, wait, should we not sign a guy to $35 million and get a guy that we can get for $7 million a year? and you know, build the rest of our football team, can be a little exasperated by the contract situation. The biggest thing, you know, whether it's the, hey, you know, we've heard from people, they tried to get up to five and neighbors was the guy. But the other, I mean, the, the big smoking gun, and you alluded to it earlier, is really the fact that, you know, as you heard, there was no legit contract talks or anything like that till after the draft which would tell you again that they were like leaving all options open and okay, most options close. Boom, boom, boom. We're he's our guy. We got to do it. Let's make a deal. Let's try to get this done. I mean, those are two things that are, that are pretty strong that to, can lead you to logically conclude that, you know, they were, you know, leaving all possibilities available for, for their organization. And some point to the fact that they came close to getting a deal done last September as evidence it's a no-brainer they were going to get a deal done. You could just as easily look at that and say that's evidence they weren't going to get a deal done because that was the time to do it. And there was some fundamental impasse that kept it from happening. And now we're a year later and the market has changed and the cap has gone up and it's going to only be harder. You know, they were putting out this idea. Can you believe he rejected $30 million per year? Well, guess what? He won. He was right. Now he got 35. Yeah. He was right. You should you should have said yes to whatever oh. he wanted in September. You should have said yes. Maybe he wouldn't have missed nine games or however many he missed well, with that hamstring. He would have come back and played before it was 100% because he had his financial security. Right. Maybe he would have made the playoffs last year right. if he'd have been back for more games than he was back for because you were too stubborn to give him what he wanted then. And you finally realized when you were backed into a corner – Huh, we better give him what he wants, even if we have to give him more than what he wanted in September. Yeah, well, and, and you know, here's the point I was going to make before, before I forgot in my cloud of smoke in my brain and me getting old here, is that, you know, again, like you don't, and you know, and we know because we hear from people like this all the time, you don't think other teams know people in Justin Jefferson's camp or maybe even other people in the Vikings organization to not to know like wait their contract co talks are not very far down the road there's something going on here I mean really everybody out there like you don't think like Justin Jefferson's agent might have not talked to a team just casually not even about Justin Jefferson be like yeah uh, you know, we're not very far down the road with the Jefferson contract. And then, you know, that like, I mean, that stuff like that goes on all the time, let alone Justin Jefferson, who knows what coach or player he knows on another team. And he's telling people. And again, that's why I think the league was calling Minnesota. You hear rumors, you hear like things like that through the, the, the grapevine, let alone, as I've told you, right? I know teams that were like, wait, this deal seems like the easiest deal in the world to get done. Well, why isn't it done? Let's call the Vikings. And, you know, so again, I, I don't think it's crazy. And we've been called crazy before. And we are crazy 
But we have a lot of logic and knowledge of the NFL, and sometimes we're not so crazy in this department. Let me say this. Let me say this. And I guess, uh, one of my friends texted and asked whether or not the FCC is called for what you said earlier. Uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet. We're not covered by the FCC. We're right. on satellite. We're, right. not, we're not over the air anymore. Right. We're over the air. And we, that's we, the, we it's hardly the first time uh, that letter, that word's been said on this show. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Don't be surprised. Don't don't act like you listen to the show and you're surprised you heard an f bomb. If you regularly listen to the show, you have heard them. Um, I I alluded to this and see one of the things I'll do from time to time. I'll I'll know things, but I can't really report them. Oh yeah. But I kind of try to make sure that you get your point if you're across. Really paying attention, yeah. you know how we do things. You get the point. Right. I'll say this, and I. I don't know that I was authorized to report at the time. I was just being discreet about it. At some point in this process pre-draft, the Jefferson camp believed the Vikings were, and this was the quote, playing games. That's not good. That's not good. Your most important player, and this is one of the reasons why I eventually said, hey, hey, Ziggy, Mark, two choices. Pay the guy or trade him to a team who will. It's one or the other. Yeah, I mean, what do you think? What does everybody think moment. playing games means, right? I mean, yeah, I mean that says that's right. a lot there too, right? And and this gets back to what we were talking about earlier. I think there's enough there for us to say they deliberately waited until after the draft because they wanted to see what would happen. Right. Let's and, just see. And we never got the him. offer we're we wanted, so we never really thought right. about trading them. Right? I mean, that's, it's really can be that simple. We never discussed it. There was never a reason to discuss it because everybody who called, and we didn't hang up the phone right away, but everybody who called put something on the table that we didn't want. Right. So we never discussed it. Never a consideration. They never made us a Herschel Walker offer. Not that that would be their exact quote, but, you know, the organization, even yeah. though no one connected to it has right. direct experience, Herschel uh, Walker will forever <laughs> be linked to the Minnesota Vikings. So, <laughs> that, that's, but so, so if, if, so, again, I just, folks, you know, because I see people out there saying, oh, you should always listen to the beat writers. They know the team better than anyone. They do, but they're not going to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth because it compromises their ability to do their jobs. They know, but they got to present it in a certain way or they're going to have the team pissed off at them. And if the team gets pissed off enough, you ain't covering that beat anymore. Well, no. I mean, again, too, I mean, you know, to, to that point, I've had beat writers – Call me or text me and go, hey, what you said on, uh, on with the show with Forio today, you guys are on the right track. I can't report this, blah, 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 but I'm letting you know that, yeah, here out in blah, blah, blah city, we're hearing the same type of thing. I mean, yes. So... You know that 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 goes on as well. It's it's a complicated league. There's lots of, of the tentacles, and it's a lot of politics and saving face and dealing with egos and making sure people feel comfortable and standing your ground and making sure you don't look weak as a leader. All oh, there's so many things that go on. Uh, you know that, that's that's why you and me are here is to, to de decipher through some of that. November 1 will be the 23rd anniversary of the launch of PFT, and over the years, some of the best leads I've gotten have come, in, have come to me from beat writers right. who know the truth and cannot touch it. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what happens. They want, it to get, they want the story to be told. Something happened that yeah. they don't like. Right. They can't touch it. Here, you should look into this. That happens not all the time. But it's happened more than a few times over the last 23 years. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.